a visibly annoyed Donald Trump, publicly lashed out at his ostensible allies at Fox News because they dared to show parts of a speech made by Vice President Kamala Harris. And according to Donald Trump, they shouldn't be allowed to do that. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, it's usually fun to point out that uh, Donald Trump is the leader of the Republican Party, and the Republican Party claims that it's the party of free speech. As is often the case, the Republican Party doesn't live up to its own purported values, uh, given that there's an authoritarian, censorious instinct within the GOP that is without equal. And Donald Trump is kind of a monument to this. He's a thin-skinned, malignant narcissist who famously has lashed out at the press, including conservative press, when they criticize him or when they you know, give attention or occasionally praise his political opponents. He has a long history of wanting to use the powers of the state against the media when the media does something he doesn't like. There is no counterpart to this within the Democratic Party of a comparable level. We saw that again during a recent speech made by Donald Trump last night because he lashed out at Fox News, the same Fox News that paid nearly $800 million, nearly a billion dollars, because they knowingly signal boosted his lies about the 2020 election. That's how loyal Fox News is to Donald Trump, disturbingly so, uh, indefensibly so. But it's never enough for Donald Trump because Fox News occasionally uh, will either display uh, speeches and clips from Vice President Harris and Democrats and even occasionally give tough interviews to Republicans. They are they are just unacceptable to Donald Trump. They're not loyal enough. And so he lashed out at them during a recent speech. These countries are so dangerous that the U.S. State Department has travel advisories warning Americans are not to go there. Yet Kamala is resettling all of those people here. Anybody that wants to come. So we have uh, travel warnings. Don't go here. Don't go there. Don't go to the various countries. And yet she's taken in the worst of those people, the killers, the jailbirds, all of the worst of the people she's taken them in. And then I have to sit there and listen to her bullshit last night. And who puts it on? Fox News. And they shouldn't be allowed to put it on. It's all lies. It's all lies. Everything she said is a lie. So he's triggered because Fox News uh, posted at least some or all of the vice president's speech at the southern border. Of course, his grounds for saying that they shouldn't put it on is that the vice president is lying. Now, he offers no evidence of that. And of course, it's kind of ironic given that Donald Trump, when he was president, lied uh, 30 thousand times, literally more than 30,000 times, according to fact checkers. He is a liar, a pathological liar, par excellence, without peer. So if a person in employing dishonesty, if, if their dishonesty is sufficient grounds to not platform them, then Donald Trump would never be platformed at all. We'd never hear from him again. But just goes to show that Trump, in addition to having a censorious instinct a mile wide, is trying to impose standards on other people that he could never live up to himself. That is part and parcel of the Republican Party under Donald Trump. Now, since he mentioned uh, the vice president's speech, I do want to play some clips from that. Apparently, a, a speech so transgressive that he is publicly lashing out at his allies at Fox News. So let's hear uh, some of what the vice president had to say. So I've just come from visiting the border and the port of entry in Douglas. I spoke with dedicated agents from Border Patrol and Customs officers who every day see the overflow of commercial traffic through the port. These men and women who work there and at other places along our southern border help keep our nation secure. And they need more resources to do their jobs, which is why we have and are in the process of investing half a billion dollars to modernize and expand the port of entry here in Douglas. <laughs> And why, last December, I helped raise the rate of overtime pay for border agents, and also why I strongly supported the comprehensive border security bill. Written last year, written last year, as you know, by a bipartisan group of senators, including one of the most conservative members of the United States Congress, 
that bill would have hired 1,500 more border agents and officers. It would have paid for 100 inspection machines to detect fentanyl that is killing tens of thousands of Americans every year. It would have allowed us to more quickly and effectively remove those who come here illegally, and it would have increased the number of immigration judges and asylum officers. It was the strongest border security bill we have seen in decades. It was endorsed by the Border Patrol Union, and it should be in effect today, producing results in real time right now for our country. But Donald Trump tanked it. He picked up the phone and called some friends in Congress and said, stop the bill. Because, you see, he prefers to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And the American people deserve a president who cares more about border security than playing political games and their personal political future. Not a single lie told. The fact of the matter was that you had people, prominent Republican leaders and top Trump allies like Lindsey Graham, Mitch McConnell, endorsing the bipartisan border bill, begging Republicans to ignore Trump and pass the bill because they recognize in divided government, this was more than they could ever ask for. It was much more conservative than progressive. Was it everything Republicans wanted? No, but they don't control government. They weren't never going to get everything that they wanted. As a matter of fact, Many progressives understandably say it was too conservative, but despite the good faith negotiations between James Langford, the Republican conservative Republican senator, uh, Kirsten Sinema, a former Democrat turned independent who herself is naturally conservative, and Democratic Senator Chris Murphy, despite months of negotiation in good faith, because Donald Trump did not want the issue to be resolved because he wanted to use it as a wedge issue uh, on which to campaign. He deliberately sabotaged the bill. He also publicly admitted it. And so did many Republican senators, including Lindsey Graham, including James Langford, including Mitch McConnell, that the reason it didn't pass was because of Donald Trump. So the vice president is probably being a bit too nice here. I would say it's, this is all Donald Trump's fault by definition. If we recognize a problem and we work in good faith to solve the problem and someone comes in and sabotages the problem that they know exists because they want to exploit the problem, then that problem becomes entirely their fault. I'll also say that as a consequence of that, President Biden issued potentially illegal executive orders. They, these, these executive orders could be struck down in court. Donald Trump's were, in many instances, by conservative judges during the Trump administration. That's why Biden wanted congressional law to solve the issue rather than the legally risky, legally dubious executive orders, which he's passed. But the results are there. Undo you know, contacts uh, at the southern border with undocumented migrants have precipitously dropped. For months and months and months and months lower now than they were under the Trump administration. So, again, Republicans exploit a problem. They help make a problem worse. And Democrats are forced to clean up the mess and often thanklessly. And this is why people should remember that as they go to the ballot box in November, that only one party, the Democratic Party, has actually worked aggressively to solve this issue. A couple more clips from the vice president. And let me be clear. I reject the false choice. I reject the false choice that suggests we must either choose between securing our border or creating a system of immigration that is safe, orderly, and humane. We can and we must do both. We must do both. We absolutely must do both. And again, this is part of the reason why so many progressives took an understandably principled opposition to a very conservative bipartisan border bill because they felt that the issue was more about demagoguing uh, migrants, even undocumented migrants, than it was about actually having a comprehensive overhaul of the immigration system, which we've attempted uh, for years now. But every time, even under the Obama administration, bad faith Republicans led by Paul Ryan and Marco Rubio sabotaged it because they wanted to demagogue it and use it as a wedge issue politically. It's part and parcel of the Republican strategy. It's a constant loop. They know that they can either create a problem, exacerbate a problem, point fingers at a problem, do nothing to solve the problem. And benefit from it politically and because democrats are the only ones expected to actually solve issues and very often when they either try or succeed they're never rewarded for it unfortunately 
One last clip from the vice president. And the contrast in this election is clear. It is a choice between common sense solutions and the same old political games. In the four years that Donald Trump was president, he did nothing to fix our broken immigration system. He did not solve the shortage of immigration judges. He did not solve the shortage of border agents. He did not create lawful pathways into our nation. He did nothing to address an outdated asylum system and did not work with other governments in our hemisphere to deal with what clearly is also a regional challenge. He didn't. And this is a really important thing to point out, because right now you have um, really bad faith Trump allies, including, for example, um, Piers Morgan. I actually just tweeted about this, too, and bring it up. So Piers Morgan, um, quote, tweets the vice president when she says, as president, I'll secure our border, disrupt the flow of fentanyl coming into the United States and work to fix our broken system of immigration. Piers Morgan, in bad faith, says, why didn't you do it when President Biden made you as borders are? So her responsibility is the quote unquote borders are, which, by the way, that was a phrase that the media applied to her. It was never an official title. It was never anything that the Biden administration employed. That was a shorthand. That was an expression that the media gave to the vice president. Her responsibility was to go to uh, various nations in our hemisphere and try to resolve the, the or at least make strides towards resolving the root causes of uh, these changes in migration. And there were many great strides diplomatically uh, under the vice president's leadership. Now, her, her job wasn't to build a wall or, quote unquote, secure the border. It was to address root causes. Now, as far as why the border has not been resolved, well, as I responded, because bad faith Republicans killed a bipartisan border bill on Trump's orders. And this is the big part. This goes back to what the vice president was saying there at the end. She pointed out what he failed to do when he was president of the United States, because this is the big part. When somebody asks you, why didn't Vice President Harris do this? Why doesn't she solve it? Why doesn't she snap her fingers? You can answer that question. You can say, well, it's more complicated than that. She's going to need uh, either a Republican Party that will negotiate with her in good faith, or she'll need Democratic control of government. OK, but then you need to flip it on them. Then you say, and also, since we're asking that question, I'm going to ask you a question. Trump was president for four years, not vice president, president. He was the big cheese for four years. Why didn't he solve the issue at the border? Why didn't he stop undocumented uh, immigration? Why didn't he build this wall? Why didn't he repeal Obamacare? Why didn't he wipe out the national debt? Why didn't he pass an infrastructure law? Why didn't he do all the things he promised to do? You see, the why don't you do it or why didn't you do it thing is a question that actually hurts Trump much more than Harris. Because not only did the Biden-Harris administration get a lot more accomplished just overall in terms of domestic and foreign policy than the Trump administration, the vice president is not the president. She doesn't have constitutional powers to snap her fingers and unilaterally make sure she's not the president. Trump was the president. So just objectively speaking, that question hurts Donald Trump much more. But people don't think to flip it on people asking that question of Harris. So I encourage you to do that. If anyone asks you, why doesn't Harris do X? Why didn't Harris do Y? Answer the question and then flip the question around. Why didn't Trump do X? Why didn't he do Y? We're going to have to hold them to the same standard. And if you don't want to hold them to the same standard, you're probably an unprincipled loser who should be made fun of. Maybe. In the meantime, let me know what you think in the comments.